Welcome back everybody, here we are for another chess game, and it's been far too long, I feel like it's been at least three months or whatever since we've done any recording, but uh, I've been busy and distracted, but here we are, um, excuse me, so we've got another game in the fried liver series, which at this point feels like it's been a thousand years old, uh, so generic setup that I've had no control over, the game started me off in this position. So, one of the last games as black in this position, I defended by moving the king over to the f-square. Um, advantages are it frees up the queen, um, and it's... It, uh, I guess that's the main advantage, really. Uh, it keeps me in the back row, so I'm, I'm a little bit less exposed. Um, but this time, just so that we have a little bit of exposure to both moves of this particular situation, um, I'm going to move up the square instead. Advantages are it helps free or helps to not block in the rook. He, he's a little bit more free. Um, and in the late game, I am one move more toward the center than my enemy king, which could possibly give me an advantage in an even game. Um, downsides are it now blocks my queen off a little bit. Um, so we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, and he retreats all the way back. And the, unlike with some of the other variations, there are no one-trick wonder moves right away. So I just have to solidify my position in the center a little bit, open up my light square bishop. Um, he kind of does the same sort of thing, continuation with his horse. Um, further de defends this pawn in case he wants to move this guy somewhere um, and attacks one of the squares that my horse could potentially go. I mean, this pawn's blocking it, so that's irrelevant. Um, but I'm going to continue doing the same sort of thing. I put my horse on a nice little pivot square and attack this bishop, so if he does want to, well he probably will, um, retreat over to the side. Um, maybe we can work on getting some shenanigans with pushing these pawns, which can give me a little bit of the space on the queen side, uh, and hopefully that can counteract the exposure and loss of position and material on the king side. Um, but he opts, instead of playing defensive, to play very sharp and aggressive. So he's pushing that down, and my options at this point, well, I can't, let me get this color. Okay, so I can't go to these two because his horse is blocking them. So my options are gonna be these three squares. Well, I purposely chose not to go to F1 or F8, I suppose, earlier in the game. Uh, so I don't wanna go there. That just seems really stupid. Um, going to D2, will block off my light squared bishop and hamper my queen, so I really don't want to do that. So my options pretty much are go over to E, or, oops, we, we want to turn that off. Um, go over to E, or take it with the horse. Uh, if we do recapture, um, he's got a couple of ways he can pick it up as well. If he does pick it up with the bishop and get himself a nice little pivot square, I'll be able to just push some pawns and scare right away um, and free up a little bit of space in the meantime. Um, if he recaptures with the pawn, it'll be slightly annoying, but I don't think it's anything that we won't be able to just capture back down the road without too much effort. Um, and it will free up um, this square from my knight being gone uh, to potentially get my queen a little bit more open as well. So I choose to take with the knight. He does in fact take with the bishop. And uh, I will just continue on by pushing the pawns to get him to run away a little bit further, but he doesn't. So this is now two for two, where he could have played defense, retreated a little bit, played slow, played some position, um, and he's opted for a very sharp, very aggressive line. So now both of us are attacking a piece, um, both of us, uh, I should say, a piece of greater significance, um, and both of us have him defended as well, so we can recapture um, However, I think the advantage lies with me, not only because I'm moving first, but because the end result, if I take and he takes and I take, is going to be my bishop on the pivot square in total control of the center and not his. So I opt to take this trade, and it works out in my favor. And uh, so now he can recapture with the pawn, but he doesn't. This time he plays a little bit of defense in position, which seems slightly backward. But if you're gonna make that decision now, but whatever. Um, and uh, I start thinking, well, this horse is kind of annoying, so maybe I should get rid of him. And so I push up to kick him out of here, make him go back to this square, 
Um, and then once he does retreat back to this square, then I'll just recapture with my pawn uh, and force him to use his pawn to go back. Instead of if I were to just recapture now, he probably would just retreat the horse there, have a nice pivot square for it, and that just doesn't help. Plus then he's attacking my weak link. And uh, I kind of like this pawn here, as he's just... He's reinforcements for this guy that makes the bishop so awesome. And if the bishop, for whatever reason, has to move down, that's fine. He still has another awesome square. So I really like this guy. Um, I would love to sacrifice him off while I could, since he's totally worthless. I at least get something for it. Um, so I try and kick the knight away first. And he doesn't respond to it. So that makes me think there's a reason he didn't respond to it. And there is. If I were to capture... He brings down the bishop, he check pins my king and queen, and I probably at that point would just forfeit, being really mad at myself. Um, so seeing that he did not just immediately run it away, I, I take a second look and say, okay, so this looks like it was a bad move, or at least not a beneficial move. Uh, maybe not awful, but um, whatever, it's not going to work out the way I intended. Um, so now I just take the opportunity and recapture that pawn while I have a chance that I'm, I'm definitely not going to go after this guy now. Um, so he recaptures, and that's fine. Opens up the file, but like I said, because this bishop is here, um, these pawns are just nice stalwarts of defense, and I even have reinforcements, so they're just it's just not going to go away. This will be a thorn in his side the rest of the game. Um, and that's fine by me. So I now bring my queen out, uh, develop it a little bit, and it gives me a couple different diagonal attacks. I'm now teaming up on this square, which I could win the pawn if I want to go for it. Bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes. Um, but I would be sacrificing this little fortress I've got in the center to take that pawn. So it's not worth it, but it at least makes it look like it's possible for me to do so. Um, it's also, and probably more importantly, uh, setting up a nice double attack here on this pawn that, that will lead with check as well. Um, currently both are defended and that's fine, but if this pawn moves or if this rook moves, they're mine. So uh, he responds by, whew, I thought maybe he would retreat down here to save that pawn, or hell, for that matter, save both pawns. Um, but he opts to play very sharp and very aggressive. He is now targeting this square um, to plop down with the queen and see what he can do from there is I would be I'd be pretty hampered in at that point I'd have to go nope not even there I have to go here I'd have one square available for movement um, to which who knows where he would retreat from there because he would also then have a possible fork on me there's just it's it's a little scary and a little ugly so however I have a great response I'm able to one open up and activate the rook um, and not only do I get to attack this pawn, that I've got all sorts of threats all facing toward now, um, I'm also defending the square from the queen. So it's it's good for position, it's good for offense, it's good for defense, it's just very simple, very strong, and it really helps me out. Um, he's going to abandon his attack, seeing that there's probably not a whole lot he's going to do with it there. Um, and by retreating the knight, he's also blocking the line of sight that my rook has. So. Uh, granted, the bishop and the queen still have the attack going on, um, but the rook is now taken out of play for it, for now. So, I take this opportunity, um, he, since his, his defense move of blocking the f-file doubles as an attack on the bishop, I uh, take the chance to save the bishop, move him back a little bit, he still has very strong control over the center, I'm not upset about it, um, I lose a little bit of play on this pawn, but... I still kind of, I, not, I don't lose a whole lot, let's, let's be real, as soon as he moves that bishop, this pawn is mine, so, um, he retreats his queen back one square, probably just because he had nowhere to go and nothing to do with it, so by giving me a turn of check, uh, it's going to force me to retreat a little bit, get away from the center, um, and it puts his queen in a slightly more playable position, perhaps, um, it takes off of a light square, which maybe there's some attacks I could start getting going um, on his queen at that point, but... Ugh. Sorry, uh, he's mostly just wasting time at this point, throwing in some checks, trying to... I, I don't really know. I don't know what it's going to accomplish. Uh, this last check now has benefited me. The first check, fine. Second check, I'm not quite as sure about. Um, it gives me a, a turn to have my rooks doubled if I ever need them to be doubled. Thanks for that. Uh, and now my king can slowly move over to being castled. Granted, after like five moves as opposed to one, 
but uh, he'll he'll eventually get there now. So that's nice. Thanks, dude. Uh, he pushes up his pawn, which looks it looks like a quiet move. Looks very un unassuming. Um, but what he's planning to do is then double up the pawns or double push this other pawn and attack my bishop, who will have nowhere to go except get traded with the horse. Um, and then it'll mess up this pawn structure, it'll just ruin everything, and I don't want that to happen. So, uh, a very unassuming move. To defend that, I'll thrust my own pawn forward, completely shut that down. If he wants to go for it anyway, we both take. I can take his rook in exchange for him taking a bishop. Fine, I'll do that a hundred times out of a hundred. Um, so that shuts that little attack down, and now I feel like I'm finally getting somewhere. I still, it still looks a little ugly and open and exposed. Um, whereas his is nice, more solid, but and we both have two pieces that have not been activated yet. I guess technically he's got three, but I don't. I consider that still being used. Um, so while it's it's much more even, I finally feel like I've I've overcome the the minor deficit at the start of the game from fried liver, and uh, I've got a couple attacks, you know, kind of in the works on some of these pawns, and uh, we'll see if there's something I can start turning around now at this point. 19 moves in, right? 20 moves in, 20 moves in, and then this happens. So we had a good game going, but I guess maybe he thought that when he moved his horse over and blocked the F file from the rook, maybe he thought, oh, okay, this this attack is good now, no more, no more threat. Um, and he must have just, over the course of time, just forgot that these two pieces are both lined up over here. Um, so I'm able to capitalize now. I take that pawn, there's not a lot, not a whole lot he can do, he can move to one of those two squares. Uh, I now get the better advantage of the trade of pieces, and I get the pawn for it as well, so huge advantage to me, um, out of nowhere. And now that I have an actual lead on the board, as opposed to just feeling like I'm doing fine, I'm going to proceed to one, break the pin that his queen has on my rook, and two, start getting this king back to uh, where he really belongs, into safety. And uh, then we'll play. Well, then we'll play some more chess from there. So uh, he moves his queen down. I don't really know what it's for at the moment. Um, so I pretty much just ignore it and continue doing my thing, feeling like, hey, these pawns are fine. Guarded by a pawn, guarded by a rook and a king. We good, right? Um, but it's a it's a little bit of a blunder by, by me. Thankfully, it's not much of a blunder. I can't take it right back because of the discovered check. Um, but he also can't really capitalize or take anything else at the same time. Um, if he takes it with the bishop, that's fine. I just take it right back. He, obviously, he's not going to take it with the queen. Um, so there's no threat here. But I do wish I didn't do that and let this happen. But uh, I guess at the same time, he moved down to take a pawn. I'm now going to move up to take a pawn that I've been sitting on for a few moves. Um, so that's maybe an advantage me. I think this pawn was more important, but not quite sure. So we at least trade the, the material, regardless of the positional advantages. Um, and now his rook no longer has a nice, uh, another rook or a queen there helping him out. So he's got one spot to go to, uh, to retreat him out of the way. That's exactly what he does. And then similar to how he was bouncing his queen around for checks, I'm going to start bouncing around for checks as well. Um, targeting a pawn, mostly just trying to see where I can get him to go, get my queen back into the middle of the board a little bit here. Um, and then he removes his attack that he had, probably because he saw that there was nothing there, um, to get a little bit of pressure on my queen to kick it out. And we're sitting at now at minus 4.1. And I decide to take this piece and go all the way up to plus 1.2. So similar to how he was in a, were in an even position, he moved his rook over as a blunder, and then I gained five points. Uh, this time I took a pawn and still lost over five points in, in, in place. So this was clearly a terrible move. Um, we can go in a little bit and check out why. Um, or at least a possibility of why. I'm not 100% sure. Um, he proceeds properly as far as being able to capitalize on it. Uh, there is some play. I move my queen over and, and allow him to the, allow him the opportunity to take this trade. Um, I guess I could possibly have retreated the rook a little bit, um, but that would have really been all I had to be maybe retreat. Let's, let's you know what, let's see what happens. What if I were to go here? Oh, checkmate in one. That's why. <laughs> Duh. 
which square is it? It's gotta be here? Yeah, here. No, that's not it. Where's the main one? I don't know. I don't want to look that hard, because I don't care. Um, so I guess moving this guy around... How does that change it? Whoa, 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 whoa. Really, there's a mate in one that I'm not seeing. Does he just... He can't just take it. Going here is not mate, because I just... Huh? I'm really confused. Oh, 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 duh. There we... No. Huh? Down here. There we go. That's where it is. Okay. He's able to go down there and uh, mate in one. So that's why we don't move the rook. Yeah, way, way to go, X. Um, so obviously he's attacking a piece of significant value, but I need to have him sit there. I can't guard it with the bishop. Um, clearly I can't run it away. can't run the rook away. So I choose to defend by moving the queen over to get a little bit of extra support and allow him to take this trade. Um, but as we're looking now, I'm, I'm losing by a little bit, and him actually accepting that trade, which, granted, he's going up in material, he's taking a rook for his horse, is a huge loss in the, uh, in the computer score of the game. Um, what the computer thinks he should have done is attack with his rook onto my pieces, forcing them to go up, uh, and then once my bishop is up off this back line, he's able to put me in check, put me in check again, and he's able to take my rook for it. Um, and then after that happens, then you still have this attack going on and uh, some other pieces kind of jumping around. So that's what uh, the computer thinks he should have done, which is why him taking my rook outright and just trading for it, even though he's going up in material, is considered a loss overall and a pretty significant loss, which like that's, a, that's fair that you go for something like that, thinking, hey, you lost an exchange down here, now you're making the exchange back up. And of course you take that, but clearly not. So... Uh, I do return return the trade and uh, offer him up a possibility to trade queens, which he does not. Um, see, I even then continue to lose a pawn, so I've now lost out on a trade and I lose a pawn, but now all of a sudden we're minus four as opposed to the plus one we were at the start of it. So the fact that he went up essentially three full points, he went up a minor piece worth of material, the computer's like, nope, you go and lose now. Um, computer suggests that he takes the queen trade and uh, reduces my threat on the board. Um, but at this point now we've both got the same number of pieces. I'm up one pawn. Um, I still haven't moved either one of these two guys though. But the game thinks that there's a, a huge advantage in my favor. So let's see if we can find it and take advantage of it. Um, I'm going to finally develop my light squared bishop. What move is this? Move 29. I'm finally bringing my bishop into freaking play. Uh, attacking a rook, it's not going to mean anything. He's going to move it. It'll be fine. No big deal. Um, it also allows me not to bring and activate this other rook. And Okay, so now I've got a little bit of threat going on here with uh, the straightaway. He retreats his queen back to guard the squares. Uh, he's only guarding one of them, though. I still have one more, and that's checkmate. Just out of the blue, just really, really quick. Um... Was, when did that become official? It wasn't official yet. Okay, it was official here. What does it say he should do instead? Go here? Oh, okay. It says he should go there. So that way I'm pinned. And I can't checkmate him. That's interesting. And then if we do trade, it's still uh, it's not a free queen. So that's cool. Instead of just giving up the immediate checkmate. And... Now it says he should go there, because the bishop is no longer guarding this square, he has a flight square. Very cool. Very cool. So the game wasn't quite over. But that is not, that's not what he saw, that's not how it worked, or how it went. And uh, we are victorious in this one as well. Um, a little bit of a tougher start this time. Uh, I don't think it went as smoothly as some of the other games, but we were able to eventually capitalize Pretty much once he moved, once he moved his rook over, um, that gave me a nice lead. I, g I had good position stuff. I noticed the trap with the horse that I didn't bait on. You know, I had good positional plays with some of the pawns, um, and he wasn't able to capitalize when I left a big gaping hole for him um, to go all the way over and take my rook. Um, so overall, it was a, it was a solid game. He played sharp lines three times uh, and only played a defensive line maybe once. 
Um, so it, it put me in a lot of pressure and really left me thinking. But in the end, defense wins championships. So thank you guys all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And I stay tuned for some more. Take it easy, everybody. Catch you later. Peace.